Yo, what's good everyone? It's Bata Run. And today we are on episode 9 of the It's Real podcast. And we're going to do a little mukbang at the same time while we chat with you lot. Okay? So we got some dumplings with some sweet chili sauce. We have some blueberries. We have a bottle of, bottle of, bottle of water. And we have some mixed nuts all healthy food so we'll start off with the dumplings let's dig in while i talk about what i did today just for starters yeah we'll change topics like i said we'll change topics every five minutes okay so the first topic of today is what i what what i've been up to today so today give you a bit of asmr while i'm talking I went to the carnival, Notting Hill Carnival, and it was lit, I can't lie. Today was actually the family-friendly one, tomorrow's the adult version, but I don't see no difference. The only difference I see is the family-friendly one is less packed than the adult one, because tomorrow it's going to be hella packed, but I had, a lot, I had fun. I was dancing and I saw people whining and grinding and doing all them sorts of things, even in the family friendly one, bro. I'm telling you. Yeah. There was a lot of good sights. Good views, too. Can't lie. And the music was banging. Yeah. A lot of you guys wanted me to do this episode on my crazy experiences. Two of you, you guys commented on my last podcast. So let me talk about a crazy experience that I've been through. So. Crazy experience. One of them has to be skydiving. You, If you guys haven't seen the video of me skydiving in Dubai already, go and check it out. It's on my YouTube channel. But let me tell you the story of how it happened, okay? So I was in the plane, first of all. And I was, there was a bunch of us, okay? There was about, let's say, around 10 people in the plane. Yeah, I say around 10 people. But I was the first one to jump out. So everybody has to pair up with, you know, obviously the experienced guy who's on top of you, on your back. And they uh, open the parachute. So... I was right near the door and the door was open as they were flying up. And here's the scary part. There was, yeah, I was literally, my legs was so close to the sky, to the freaking clouds, bruv. I could literally see the clouds and that was my first time skydiving. I was shitting myself. Honestly, I was scared as fuck. Trust me. And you know what's funny? There was a guy sitting down. He, there was no chair or anything. He was sitting on the floor of the plane, the inside bit. And he was right next to the window. The window was open. Like he had no belt on or nothing, bro. He was the actual photographer. He was meant to take a video of me. So he jumped out. Did he jump out first? Yeah, he jumped out first. Then the girl, the girl was behind me. So there was an experienced woman, right? She was probably in her... Middle age, middle ages, maybe around like 40 something. That's how she looked. So she was strapped onto me from behind, didn't it? But I had to basically crouch down into like a squatting position and then like kind of walk my way to the edge. And I was bloody hell, I was shitting myself. So I was, lit I was the one who had to make the first move to, to get out of the plane before she did. And that was the scary part. I can't lie. My heart was racing like mad. You can't see the fear in my eyes in that video, but trust me. <laughs> yeah, I know. It was scary. But I still did it. And probably the best experience of my life. Okay, that and skiing. Skiing is another. Them two are definitely up there in terms of 
the best experiences in my life. Skiing, I did as a school trip. So skiing... Um, Okay, wait, wait. Let me just carry on talking about skydiving for now. Let me let me finish off this story. So, we came out, and uh, basically, I had to hold on to the straps right until she t- she taps on me and says, "You can let go." When she tapped on me, bro, I didn't even let go. <laughs> it took me a while. I did let go at one point, yeah, when they had to take photos and stuff, so I can do all these poses and shit like you saw in the video. But it took me a while to actually let go of it. <laughs> Um, as soon as I let go, I felt free. I felt fine. And then obviously she opened the parachute and that was when the, there was a big, uh, big like bit of pressure in my, you know, groin area. Cause that's where the, all my weight is, uh, is going into the, um, the straps and everything. So yeah, crazy, crazy. But when I, when she opened the parachute, I can actually, get a chance to see the view because it was just more peaceful like it we weren't going at such a high speed so i actually had a chance to admire the view like i could see the freaking burj khalif could i see the burj khalifa i could see the freaking the island i don't know what you call it the is it palm island on dubai correct me if i'm wrong but i think it's the palm island and oh the view was stunning it was beautiful absolutely beautiful i loved it i loved every bit of it man oh my god it was like i was in, i was in a dream i was in paradise when i was up there it just felt like i was in paradise and she even let me take control of the the um freaking parachute thing and i didn't do it because it was my first time and i was still a little bit scared so i didn't do it but if i went again i probably would have done it and then yeah we dropped down the the main thing i was worried about was obvi- the first bit, obviously, jumping out the plane. The first bit. That was the one thing I was worried about. And the second thing I was worried about was landing. Because I needed to know exactly what how I needed to land. And I, I, I sh- couldn't fuck up. Because the landing is... Bloody hell, if you fuck up the landing, oh, I don't know what's going to happen. But obviously, they're all experienced. They've been doing this. It's basically their job. So they obviously know what they're doing. So even if you do fuck up, I'm sure they'll sort things out. So I just had to like... I had to be in this position. Okay, say this is... Um, this is me, yeah, and this is my legs. So I had to go like this at the end. So I had to bring my legs up like this, and basically in a seated position, and then just make sure my legs hit the ground first before my bum in it. And then my my, my legs hit the ground first. I slide, and then my bum hits it, and then that's it. Easy. The landing was so smooth. I can't lie. It was actually really smooth. You saw it in the video. I don't have to explain, but I just wanted to let you know how it felt, like what was going in my head at that time. Bro, I was scared. At the beginning, I was scared, fam. You have no idea, fam. Trust me. Okay. Now let's talk about skiing. Hold on. I think the drinking part is better. <sighs> All right, cool. So skiing. Okay, first, this was a school trip. It was meant to be like a week thing. We did dry skiing lessons first before we actually went to Austria to do the actual skiing. Dry skiing was in UK. Now, I kid you not, dry skiing was more painful and worse than actual skiing. Because when you fall on that, bro, you get hurt. You get bruised and shit. It's rough. It's not like as soft as snow. So I feel like it's good that we actually get to train on that first because at least we experience the worst before we actually, you know, go into the actual snow. Then when I went on... The actual, oh, another thing, my geography teacher, he came with us once, right? Dry skiing. Next day, he came into the lesson with a freaking whole bandage on his arm, bruv. That guy fell like mad. I don't know how he agreed to actually continue to go to Austria with us to do actual skiing after that, because he actually did come with us, even after that massive injury. But trust me, it was worth it. 
At first, I was falling down. Okay, when we were in Austria, I was falling down a lot, okay? I started off as a... Obviously, I started off as a beginner. I was probably really bad with keeping my balance because, you know, when you're tall, you don't have much stability in it. So I was falling down all over the place. But towards the last few days, bro, I came, I became a pro. And there was a point where the actual skiing instructor, right? He had to rate us we had to rate the top three out of around 10 people that he trained okay i was in the top three i was the second best skier i think second or third i can't lie but i feel like it was second i think i was the second best skier and i was in the top three and uh yeah i improved a lot but i don't know about now and it's been years since i've been skiing so i don't know how i'll do now but i feel like i'll be able to pick it up better but I do know a friend of mine who lives in Birmingham who used to be a skiing instructor. So it would be nice if we go on a skiing trip one day. Who knows? But I feel like going to cold countries on a, on a holiday is less common in UK. Like British people rather go, you know, sunbathe in the beach in Ibiza or something. Or freaking have a party in Benidorm or whatever. You know what I'm saying? It's less likely for a British British people to actually go on holiday in a cold country like Austria or Switzerland in the winter or whatever to do skiing. But I feel like I want to go skiing again because that was amazing. The amount of ski lifts we had to take to get to the top was crazy. That That just goes to show how high we were. It was crazy. And I saw little kids, bruv. Little kids do all these mad freaking skiing. I mean, they didn't do tricks and shit, but they went fast, bro. Like, I mean, obviously they're from that country and they're from, they're actually Swiss people. So they know what they're doing and shit. But still, I need to be on their level. I need to be, I need to have whatever they're on for, honestly. But yeah, love that. So that's skiing out of the way. That was a crazy experience. Another crazy experience. Hmm, crazy experience. That's what you lot specifically said in the comments. Talk about your crazy experiences. I'm trying to think of another crazy experience. I can't lie. Because that's a mad question. Um, there's blueberries, by the way. The antioxidants. Crazy experience, yeah? Bro, it'll come back to me. I'll come back to it towards the end of the podcast. We'll see. We'll see. Now let's talk about travel. Since I've been talking about skiing and skydiving, let's talk about travel in general and like what countries I've visited since I was a kid. So first of all, when I was really, really young, maybe like a toddler, like five years old or whatever, I went to Paris with my family. And I don't remember shit. All I remember is nothing. I just see the pictures that my parents took. The actual um, physical copies of the photographs. But yeah, we went to see the Eiffel Tower and whatever. Then, as I got older, we went to India. So India, I went three times. Sri Lanka, I also went three times. Because every time we go to India, we go to Sri Lanka straight after and that's only like maybe like a one hour flight in between so india we went south india not north side we normally go south because i'm half south indian so we went south side we went chennai we went i don't know if you guys know about these places but i'm gonna say it anyway google it if you don't know it okay these are all these places are in south india so there's chennai there's kadalur there's I can't remember the other names. Tanjawur. There's Palmburam. Yeah, that's it. Okay, that's India. Sri Lanka. There's Jaffna. There's Vaunia. There's Trinko. And yeah, every time we go to India and Sri Lanka, it's mainly to visit distant relatives that I have no idea. So like my dad just takes me to this random relative's house and he's like, oh, this is someone I used to know and all that. And then 
they expect basically this is how Tamil parents are in, in general just just to let you know they bring out some random relative and then they expect you to know this person because they've been with you when you were a little kid and then you're like forced to act like you know them and say hi how are you doing like forced to be like your friend friendly with them and then they they think oh you don't remember you don't remember of course i don't remember i was freaking four years old two years old i was in a freaking nappy you know what i'm saying like that's just how it is in asian families probably the same in other families too in other cultures but i'm just saying i'm not talking about like going on holiday and stuff i'm talking about in general like for example going to a wedding and you see these relatives that you've never met in years and and your family expects you to know them and remember them when you don't you just physically mentally can't remember them and no matter how many times you tell them you're like they really want you to remember them you know what i'm saying like it's funny and they'll and they'll just blame you and say why the hell can't you remember why why have you got memory loss or something yeah whatever so that's that so yeah whenever we go to india and sri lanka we it's mainly beaches and temples and jaffna boy oh boy jaffna's beach was beautiful because sri lanka is an island right so obviously islands have beautiful stunning beaches and jaffna's beach the white sand the really nice clear blue sea oh it was just it was paradise honestly it was paradise yeah loved it so that's india sri lanka okay now the holiday i went with my mates with my friends with my school friends so first we went to rome Okay, for Rome, we had a bit of a mad experience. Okay, you, you asked for crazy experiences, right? I'll give you a crazy experience. When we went to Rome, we literally stayed in huts. Okay, it was someone's idea to book these huts, and they did. And first of all, the beds were crazy. Um, one of them, their mattresses broke, so I had to get a mattress replacing. Second of all, we were literally living in huts. I mean, that's crazy. At least we got the really authentic experience of Rome, maybe. Not living there, but staying there, of course. And uh, third of all, insects, bro. I mean, that goes without saying, like, hot countries are always full of them. you got to expect it. But still, there wasn't much ways to get rid of them in that place that we stayed at. You know what I'm saying? So it was wild. When I say wild, I literally mean we were in the wild. <laughs> yeah. But um, I loved it, though. Apart from the place we stayed at, the place we visited was really nice. I mean, like, apart from the place we stayed at, the rest of the trip was really nice. Because we went to, the, obviously, we went to the Colosseum where the gladiators used to fight. We went to Pompeii to see the volcanoes. And Pompeii was mad because we actually saw ashes on buildings. Because in one ancient city in Pompeii, there was a massive fire, right? And in that fire, you can literally walk through that little, that ancient city and relive the memories. Because the, the way they built it, I mean, the way they kept it, the same for all those years is mad they didn't change much you know the pavement it was all like pebbled like i mean the roads were all pebbled you can literally see markings of carriages like they never used to be cars back in the day it used to be carriages right you can see the markings of the wheels of the carriage on the on the pebbles that's how ancient that city was bro and then we went to see the bodies so basically that whole city was burnt in it there was a massive fire i don't know what caused it i can't remember what caused it but there was a massive fire in that city right and you can see the remains of a dead body a, a human body and a dog's body and you can see the ashes covered all over it and they preserved that for years bro for years i'm telling you and that's mad that was eye-opening i can't lie and not only that when you drive through rome um, through Pompeii and you see all these buildings right they don't decorate it they don't paint over the 
the ash marks on the walls of the buildings. You can literally see the, the black stains on the buildings because they want to preserve that and keep it original. You know what I mean? I don't know why they do that, but I guess that's the originality for Pompeii. Okay, guys, that's episode nine done. Please like, comment, subscribe. I hope you enjoyed this episode and, you ca and I catch you guys later.